Hey, it's good to see you back here. Today, we're gonna be talking about the Deliver tab in DaVinci Resolve, so let's jump into the video. All right, so if you're new to DaVinci Resolve and you're not familiar with the Deliver tab, I'm gonna run through it, just show you some of the things you can do and how to export your first project here in DaVinci Resolve using the Deliver tab. So let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and check it out. So here we are in the Delivery tab in DaVinci Resolve and let's go ahead and assume I've already got my project done. My timeline looks good. It's exactly how I wanna export the project. So I'm done. So we're in the Deliver tab and if you're not sure how to get there, it's this little rocket ship looking guy down the bottom right hand side of your screen. Come over there, click that, you're in the Deliver tab. So just running over the window really quickly, this little thing that looks like a TV on a stand here, all that does is extend your render settings window down to the bottom of the screen. So I like to leave that open so I can see a little more information. Tape is if you have some kind of external recording or something. Clips, if you click on that, it'll show your timeline clips right here. Sometimes you wanna see it, sometimes you don't. For me, it doesn't really matter at this point. And coming across the top, you've got your render queue. So once we create a job, it's gonna live here in the queue. And lastly, this little triangle button will extend the job queue window down to the bottom of the screen should you have a lot of jobs that you wanna render. Moving down a little bit, as I mentioned over on the left-hand side here, we have all of our render settings. In the middle here, we have our actual video clip from our timeline. Down here below that, we have our timeline. And we have our jobs queue on the right. And this is where we'll see all of the jobs that we create, which is just the different ways we might wanna export our file. So getting back over here to the render settings, this is where you're gonna make all your adjustments of how you wanna export your video. So if you scroll across the top here, you see there's all different kinds of options. There's custom, there's one for YouTube at 1080. And if you click the little drop down, it does give you uh, several other options of how you can export it. And these are preset things for you. All you have to do is click it and in theory, you should be good to go. You have Vimeo, same thing. You got some drop down options. You have uh, ProRes, you have H.264, H.265, and a bunch of other file formats here. Final Cut Pro, Premiere, Avid Pro Tools, and even audio only if you only wanna export your audio. So for me, I will typically use either the YouTube setting, uh, this is what I started with in the beginning, and then I moved on to just doing my own custom and coming up with my own uh, preset here. It's basically presets, these are all presets, so you can make your own preset however you want. So I'm gonna just show you how to come up with one for YouTube, since that's typically what I'm uh, exporting my videos for, and I do it at 1080, and that seems to work out good for me, so I'm gonna show you how to create that. And if you're not sure what settings you should be using for YouTube, you can come and Google it, and you're gonna find recommended upload settings for YouTube. So as you look here, you can see the container's MP4, the audio is AAC with a sample rate of 48 hertz. Video codec, the preferred is H.264. You got frame rate, you got bit rate, and if you scroll down the bit rate, you're gonna see all the different settings that you should use for the recommended uh, resolution of the files that you're uploading. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna be doing 1080. So I'm gonna scroll down to recommended video bit rates for HDR uploads. And I'm gonna make this setting for 1080p. And I usually do mine at 23.976 frames per second. So I'll be using 10 megabytes for that, but we'll get into that as we get there. And then the aspect ratio and resolution in standard 16 by nine. So let's jump back into DaVinci Resolve. So I'm gonna start with the custom menu here. So you can select your file name. So you can name it whatever you want. I'm just gonna call it export. We'll just call it export one for now. You can browse and select a file location where you would like it saved. For render, you wanna use single clip. So that's gonna take everything in your timeline and render it out to a single clip. Individual clips would render out each individual clip in your timeline. So select single clip for one video file. Coming down to the next section, you have video, audio, and file. So looking at video, we have export video, the format. I'm gonna come down and I wanna pick MP4, since that's what it said on the YouTube website. The codec, if you click on there, you've got different options and H.264 is the option that they prefer. So that's what I'm gonna select. You can turn on use hardware acceleration if available and network optimization, I just leave unchecked. Coming down to the resolution, You've got all your different options here from 4K, 8K, uh, 1080, 
you know, all these different options. You can pick whatever your video timeline was created in and you want to match your video timeline. So that way everything comes out good in your video export. So I used 1920 by 1080 HD. So I'm going to select that. My frame rate for my timeline is 23.976. I'm going to select that. And down here for quality, you can leave it on automatic, or if you want to match, coming back to our YouTube guidelines here, match the bit rate for a 1080p video, you see it's 10 megabytes per second. So let's jump back to resolve. You can say restrict to 10,000 kilobytes per second, which equals 10 megabytes per second. Profile encoding, I just leave that on auto. Entropy mode, I just leave that. I do do a multi-pass encode. I don't know if it helps or not, but that's what I leave on. Keyframes, I leave it on automatic, and I just leave this frame reordering checked. Since that's uh, already checked on, I just leave it. And then next you have advanced settings, and I generally don't change anything here. Um, if you wanna use your optimized media that you may have already created, you can select this option here, use optimized media. But if you did use optimized media when you were creating your video in your timeline, DaVinci Resolve will use the full resolution footage when it renders out your video. So you don't have to worry about, you know, getting a video where the quality isn't so good because you used optimized media. You can use rendered cached images if you want. That just means DaVinci Resolve is going to use rendered images or cached things that it already has done and it won't have to do it again. Next, you have enable flat pass. Just leave it off. And I don't check any of these tone mapping, all this stuff. I just leave as it is. In the final section here, you have subtitle settings. I don't have any subtitles, but if you did, you can export them as well. So scrolling back up in the window, let's say I want to go look at the audio now. I'm going to select the audio tab. You have your codex here. And in this case, I've only got the AAC, which is what I want anyway. I want to use constant bit rate. For data rate, I'm going to leave that as it is. Sample rate, same as project. Bit depth, leave that as it is. And output track, I want to use my main stereo output. And then file is some of the same information we put in up here, where you want to put it, custom names, uh, your render speed, which is usually maximum. I would leave it like that. And generally, I don't touch any of those settings. So let's say I've got everything set up how I want it. So now just click Add to Render Queue, and it's going to add it over here into our queue on the right-hand side. So this is basically all the settings that we just made are right here in this job. Now, when I save the project, this gets saved with it. So anytime I want to go back and export this project using these same settings, I'm just going to select this and hit click Start Render. And then DaVinci Resolve will render out my timeline and put it wherever I said in the location area. So let's say I also have a YouTube one. I'm going to add that in. And then I did a Vimeo one. And I'm going to add that to the render queue. You can see in the render queue, we have all these different jobs. So you've got the ability to create different methods of exporting your project. Maybe you want a YouTube one. Maybe you're going to play it on a TV or maybe you're going to do it in uh, Instagram and you want a vertical video. You can set all those options and then basically save a preset. So whatever job you want to render, you can click on it, hit start render, and then DaVinci Resolve will go ahead and start rendering your video clip. So that's how you get all these jobs over here. And let's say I went back and I had my custom uh, settings here. I wanted to save that as a preset like I did right here, JY YouTube. You would go through, make all your settings, and then come up to these three little dots up here, click on them, and select Save as New Preset. And then you can name it, click OK, and then it'll pop up here in your render settings. And all you have to do is click on it, and boom, there's all your settings. Nice preset save for you. You don't have to recreate the wheel every single time that you come in here to export a video. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like DaVinci Resolve and you want to learn more about it, consider subscribing to my channel and make sure you click the notification bell to get notified when I release a new video. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.